Hey everybody, happy Friday and welcome back to Retail Reptiles. My name is Garrett Hartle, which you probably don't remember anymore because it's been so long since we put out a YouTube video. I think that our little hiatus might be worth it for you. We're going to take today's video and just explain exactly what have we been up to pretty much since the March Tinley Park show when we really started slowing things down on this channel. So for those of you that I actually got to see back in the last Tinley Park show, you may or may not have known that I actually fought through that weekend with pneumonia. It seems like there's always some kind of major health problem that I have right around Tinley Park. They say that uh, health problems a lot of times are stress related. I wonder if there's some kind of correlation there. Anyway, I had a really good time at that show. I loved our location in the corner. Uh, the booth was looking good. We actually tore it down again and rebuilt it. I called it booth 3.0. And some of the cool things that were added, uh, number one, was that we had a lot more adult and sub-adult animals on display. Uh, with our corner style layout, people were able to walk through and really kind of immerse themselves just as they walked around the corner in that reach out reptiles experience that we try to share with everybody. I think that runs with our whole blue collar vibe here at reach out reptiles, so it worked out well in the end. Probably the biggest change around here was that I've hired my first employee, Aiden, to kind of help out and I guess provide a little perspective for you guys. My name's Aiden Paredes. I've been working at reach out reptiles for about three months now. I absolutely love working at Reach Out Reptiles. I love being with the snakes and even though I'm just cleaning animal stuff, that's what I do at home all the time with my own pets. That was my main goal to come to work and work with animals. This office, and I don't know how it looks through the little camera lens over there, but this is not the same corner of the facility that I used to have my office in. Yeah, so in order to actually put this whole operation together, I had to pretty much tear apart my basement. You can see we lined all that stuff with everything. We had to run new gas lines for heaters and the reptiles, new electric. Uh, we actually tore out and used some under the stairs storage area here. And of course, you know, with us, I can't do everything, can't do anything halfway. So, you know, we had to make it all cool. We lined the same thing here. So that when you walk in the room, you get the illusion of more depth in my little basement office. So. It's ridiculous and it's tiny, but I'm pretty proud of it. <laughs> the new office area. When I first came here, the office, it was just a whole bunch of storage, kind of. And now it's an office and the snakes are separated from like the office area and it's nice. It's like two different rooms now. Now the snake room, let me show you over here. Snake room is actually all cages now. Um, and we're getting even more cages in. This is kind of a, a pr little bit of a prototype for a new adult cage, but this is where the old office used to be. The biggest change here has been the new racks. I like the new cages a lot. They're simple, easy to clean. The Freedom Breeder racks are really professionally built and nice. So I used to have baby racks all on that side, and you can see I still have a few hatchlings over here. Um, but this was all a much smaller sized cage. It was this size cage as before with all our hatchlings in there. And uh, boy, we just had a ton of snakes this season. It was really good. At one point, I think I had eight clutches in an eight week period hatch, which was fantastic. So when I first came, there were so many babies that it took me a whole day to clean them. Now there's a lot less. There's been some really pretty ones that I saw, and we still have some really pretty ones. My favorite are the golden childs. I love the golden childs, and the snows too. The snows are really pretty. We just had platinum marbles, and those are really pretty. My favorite snake is the Motley Golden Child. If I like this specific snake, it's just like a solid black snake with this beautiful head pattern, and this head pattern is really pretty. And yeah, I like that. I wanted to get them set up in these larger style cages. 
So, you know, if you're the I hate tubs situation, slow down a second. You know, you don't have to always hate all tubs all the time. Look at this beautiful little guy. This is uh, from the first clutch ever of Super Dwarf Orange Ghost Stripes. But you can see that this enclosure is one and a half, almost two times as long as him, which is great. This is an adult ball python breeder tub, but uh, we're using it with the Hatchling Super Dwarfs and it gives them a ton of space. It obviously takes up a lot more room, but that was an exchange I was willing to make. So that's really fun. But this is where the office used to be. And you can see now it's this whole wall of Freedom Breeder cages. So one of the things that I've needed for a long time now, and those of you who follow me on Facebook probably know a little bit about what's going on, but I need a shop vehicle. And I actually made a post on Facebook about it. So a buddy of mine reached out to me in regards to that post and he said, I think I have something for you. And he actually had a, a 1969 Chevy C10 pickup, just like this one, sitting around uh, that was kind of like halfway done and everything that he decided he might like to trade for some animals. But Justin is uh, really a lot like us, blue collar, handyman, DIY kind of guy. So him and his wife, Jacqueline, and really his whole family have been pitching in on this build to make it happen. But they're gonna take their old truck and they're putting a, uh, a period correct Corvette engine in it. So it's gonna be an old school carbureted V8. He's putting a new transmission, you know, brakes, power steering, all that, making it really kind of bringing it into the modern world to a certain extent and uh, painting it for me. We're gonna get our logo slapped on the side there and boom, we'll have a shop truck. So Garrett has secret snakes that he's trading for a truck and a bike for retail reptiles, but I can't tell you what the snakes are. I'm not allowed to. Well, sure, I'll tell you what they are. <laughs> so these snakes are kind of a gamble. They're snakes I should probably hold back, but basically when these snakes hatched, they came out very different. And being a retic guy myself, you know, I kind of discount different things as, you know, s standard anomalies or just variations of a normal. But there were two snakes in this small clutch that actually expressed this trait, a male and a female. Justin, after seeing some pictures and stuff of them, along with a lot of people that uh, are pretty involved in the ball python breeding realm, uh -huh. Feel that this could be a, a very significant new morph. So some people might think that Justin is crazy for trading a, a nice truck like this and a motorcycle, which I had him throw in by the way, for some snakes. Other people that are more on like, especially the ball python snake side of it, think that I'm crazy for letting potentially a, uh, a pretty big deal in new morph of super dwarf reticulated pythons go to another breeder for potential development. It's hard to tell who's crazier because they could be just nothing, but they could also have like a special morph. Actually, it's a, it's a pretty exciting trade. So if you guys want to follow along on the progress of that build and, and just what on earth kind of animals would make it worth somebody to trade their, you know, kind of beloved hot rod in for some snakes, Go ahead and give him a follow. It's Family Jewels on YouTube. The link is in the description below. Garrett's doing a podcast now. Well, that's cool. I don't listen to podcasts. It's probably exciting for some of our viewers. Yeah, so another buddy of mine, Brian Cusco, I'm sure a lot of you guys know him. If you actually go back to his March Tinley kind of vlog style videos, you will see the birth of a concept. We're very different people individually, Brian and I and we come from opposite ends of the country, and we have a lot of different views on life in general, but the one thing, and this is true of everybody in the reptile industry, the one thing that ties us together is our interest, our love, and our passion for reptiles. So I thought it would be really cool to kind of kick loose with him and bat around some different ideas. This is gonna be a couple of reptile guys having a what's pertinent to our lives sort of podcast, what's going on in the industry, addressing some of those issues and just cutting loose. Hopefully you guys will enjoy that. We're going to start out doing that once a month, so stay tuned for information on that. So I just got back from Carpet Fest Southwest. Now I'm turning around and heading back out to the Pomona Reptile Super Show. If you guys are heading out to the Pomona Super Show this weekend, look for me in the Reach Out Reptile shirt and make sure you stop by and say hello, shake hands, let me know who you are and uh, what you love about what's going on with the Super Doors these days. Let's talk a little shop.
Be sure to subscribe, like, and share. You guys have a great weekend. We'll catch you next time.